Hello everyone and you're so much welcome to today's tutorial. I still remain your shoe making made easy to tell Udrule Mojibola and of course today is going to be a great day because we are going to be learning something uniquely unique. As much as I love to teach us how to make shoes, I really want you to be able to make a piece or a pair of footwear for your children. So I'm going to be showing you how I was able to embellish this open toe design for this wedge. If you're watching for the first time, all we do is make shoe making easy and simple for you. Of course, this was the footwear we had before and we transformed this into what we have. I need you to sit back and I'm gonna be right back. So a few days ago, I remember in one of my live sessions, I taught how to create this kind of open toe design and how you can also transform that open toe design into something you know like this so today i want to quickly show us how to actually last this particular upper that we have on the thumbnail like you know so the first thing i want to do is of course i have told us to always make sure that we measure their instep girth each time you are creating a footwear for somebody measure their instep also measure their ball girth that will help you to know what shoe last to actually use for them now this particular shoe last is size 40 that's what is written on it yes does this size five, does this size some people that wear size 40 yes but does this size everybody that wears size 40 no so it means those people who have a very wide feet you know this part is actually too small for them so all i do most times is after placing it the perfect way i move it forward for about one centimeter forward just for me to be able to you know accomplish a wider part of that particular shoelace so when you are lasting at any point in time and you find out that the shoelace you are using is a bit smaller for that particular person by pushing it forward you'll be achieving a wider you know space by the time you begin to last so that is what i'm going to do so in case you are using size 39 for example and you want to i want to lose it to last 40 all you need to do is just move it forward by about one centimeter then use it to last of course it's important that you know the you know various dimensions of the person's foot so let's quickly go into this so i'm going to be using this right now so just follow me as i do this like i said i'm going to place it forward a bit if you have a rubber band you can use it to hold it but for me i don't think i need one so all this kind of style they are always very easy to last the reason is because they automatically you know position themselves quite well that's what i have find out they position themselves quite well so with this i also want to make sure that my shoe last is not bending it's actually right at the center this way it's not looking like this so that it will not be looking like that on the person's feet as well so you can see what i have right here i'm going to place it this way now most times when you want to when you want to last design like this don't just place it make sure that by the time you are placing you are bending it backward let it bend don't just place like this most times that's why you have something bulging out here when you last design such as this so please i need you to pay attention to that so i'm just going to try to check this out make sure that this one is at the right position you want to be sure it's at the right position before you move on so i'm going to place this this way and i'm definitely going to place this this way so i have picked those front parts of that design as you can see so i'm going to use my hand to hold it down and turn it this way and try to use my glue to hold it down right there i'm sure you can see that and i'm going to do the same thing right here you can see me pulling it most times you don't pull that's why this place is always bulging out when you finish your footwear can you see make sure you pull it properly well so when you are through with that ensure you keep adjusting to the center and let it be at the right position so i'm going to go ahead and then come to this side and also place it downwards that way so you want it to be firm enough for the person now you can see what i have right here you can see what i have right here so you want to also hold it the same way 
and try to now position it. I think I need to reduce what I have right here. Yes, I'm going to do the same thing here. So, place a little here. And I'm going to drag it in that way. I'm going to hold it down. I want to ensure that this one too is properly positioned. A little gum will do. So, you can see what I have right here. Now, I have picked those two points. Now, I have this middle part. How do I do this to make it easy for me? See, try to fold it down this way. Can you see? Can you see? So, I'm going to try to cut right here. You understand? And then it will be easy for me to place it so that all this edge will be smooth. So, from here, you can definitely, you know, And you want to start from the edge by pushing it in because the most important part of this design is this edge it has to be smooth so that by the time you are bottoming it it will not be stressful you can still cut this of course I'm going to still try to make this you know as flat as possible now I need you to know that if I decide to trim down this way it will also be easy. Another alternative way of doing this, especially when you are having bulky, you know, something at the middle is you reduce it downwards. It will be easy to place this down. It will be very easy. So let's do this with this and let me show you what I'm trying to say. Can you see that it's smaller now? So I'm still going to follow the same step, the same way. This time around, I'm still going to use my hand to press from the side because that is the most important part of this design. You want to press from the side. So after that, you can, like, you understand, do this. And before you know it, practically, you're good to go and the design is perfectly okay as well. I'm sure you can see what I have right here. So the next part of the design is the back pattern. Okay, I think this is the wrong one. This is the back pattern I'm going to be using. Now, if you look at this back pattern, you find out that because I pushed it forward, that's why you have this. So I'm going to push it backward. Can you see that? It will be having some allowances by the time you push it backward. So I want it to be backward this way a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and last this. So the height you should use for the side, for this particular side, is about two and a half. I mean, about two and a half inch should be perfectly okay for this. So you want to pick up your measurement tape. And just try to sh check. Let me straighten it. Thank you. So you want to put it right here. No. Put it this way and try to check. This is about, um, um, it's not even up to 2.5. It's about 2 quarter. This is 2 quarter. Now, you can actually work with 2 quarter. The 2.5 is not like it has to be 2.5. But on the average, make sure that is between you know that your 2.5 it must not be up to 3 it should not be even up to 2.75 that's the truth or else it will be looking very wild like it will be too high especially this kind of um back pattern so i'm going to say you should work just between 2 and 2.5 most times we use 2 for children in short sometimes we use 2 uh, 1.75 for children i mean for children so, but adults, you can actually, it can be as high as 2.5, like I said. You can adjust it upwards. If you want to, you can adjust it upwards. Then check again. Can you see that it's around, it's actually at 2.5. Now, this side is at 2.5, so. So, this particular one, I want to also make sure that I connect it. So, I want to just try to punch so that it will be easy for me to hold the back pattern properly well, so. You can use the position on the strap. I mean the position on the shoe last to actually do this one. I think I just need one for now. Then I can just make it two. 
like one centimeter or 1.2 centimeter difference between each of the one you are punching you understand don't let it be too close one centimeter to 1.5 and uh, 1.2 should be fine so let's use this and then place it this way you understand so I'm going to try to adjust it you know this one has rubber and then I want to try to I don't want to I don't want the rubber to really be part of it the elastic the buckle has an elastic I don't want it to be part of it so I don't really want to push it much I don't want to push the rubber at all as much as I can so you can see what I'm doing right here can you see so all you need to do is make sure that they are actually at the same spot at the back here they are the same spot you have check and you have 2.5 or 2.25 because two quarter of an inch don't forget this is the inch part so 2.5 or 2 okay this is actually 2.5 you can see this right here so you can check the other side too and be sure of what this is I'm going to turn it this way hold it down like this and check this is also about 2.5 considering let me check well I love to ascertain and be sure of what I'm doing here okay this is also 2.5 you can see it right here so it's just this height we are taking this height you know to this part of the of the insole so with this we can like i said it can it's not composite that it must be 2.5 it can be 2.25 you understand but it should not be excessively high you really need to pay attention and check that so i'm going to also cut this i've taught back pattern too that's why i am not really talking about it i've taught how to cut back pattern as well so Can you see the way it's standing? If the person you are making for is close to you, right? You can actually use your feet. It's not like there's anything attached. So can you see what I have right here? Can you see what I have? Can you see what it looks like? So don't forget that there are some designs in front. Let's go right into that now now you can see i have actually folded a strap i actually make use of about 1.5 centimeter and i folded it this way so that it should not be too wide so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to be placing it right here you can see i position the shoe last exactly the way it's supposed to be and then i'm going to place it at the middle while we quickly fix you know our beautiful are we going to call it bow what are we going to even call it is it bow? Okay. Let's say bow. So this is going to be here. You can see what I have right here. Now, how do I, you know, create all those flowery bows? What I did was I actually cut a square shape. No, that's not square. A rectangular shape that has about um, 3 centimeter by um, 3.5 centimeter dimension. So it means one side will be 3.5, the other side will be 3. So that's what I did here. And I used my pinking share to actually cut this wavy design. Now my, my pinking share has a wavy design. We have different types. We have different types. Some are zigzag. Like some are zigzag. But uh, my horn is actually not zigzag. As you can see, it's a coffee design. So you can see what I have, you know, right here. You can see what I have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin to fold it. Now, you want to fold it to create a small bow. Am I going to call this bow? It's a bow now, yeah. So you want to fold it gently until you get what you want, until it looks like a bow. So you want to fold it properly well. Then I'm going to knot the middle. That's what I'm going to do to this. So, like I said, I'm going to just fold, fold this way. Because when it comes to the folding, you don't just want to do like this. Oh. Don't just do it like that. You fold it in such a way that this first part you fold, then this can come in. This part can come in. This part you don't want it to fold this way. 
don't fold it this way don't fold it this way make sure that at least a tip of it is still going downwards so that by the time you pick it it will be like this so the two side is going to be downward and you are not going to be having any part of it the wrong side of the leather showing outward so i'm going to be using my um thread my sewing thread is 200 and t 210 d that is the kind of um, polyester um, thread that i'm using and it's size three that's what i used to stitch normally so i'm going to use it to hold that middle you can see what it literally looks like now it's not compulsory that you use this particular format you can actually also try to make sure uh, create it in such a way that it looks like figure eight where the midpoint will go inside a little bit the midpoint will go inside a little bit so it will have formed that shape so you are just going to hold it a little bit at the middle all right this is what i'm trying to say you can you will find out that this one is not totally straight there is you know it has like a cuff inside this already so you can easily just fold it in and form your shape can you see what it looks like but if you are not careful can you see that this part is showing is up and this part is off you want to fold it in such a way that those parts are not off for me i always don't want it to be out so you can see what it looks like now so you fold it in such a way that it's not showing outward so that all this side will cough in this way and cough in this way and it will be perfectly okay and you just follow the same trend roll it all around it and then mm -hmm. knot it down properly well so this is what we're going to be arranging on our beautiful flowery or ro it's not rose it's flower it's bow okay whatever the case may be <laughs> so i'm just going to go ahead trim this off and use my lighter to knit it down very well don't forget to make sure you knot it about two three times at the back so that it doesn't pull off easily so please here is my lighter so you can see what i have so i'm just going to begin to arrange it right on top of my design i'm going to try to arrange it you want to pull the first one now to make it easy i don't think it's necessary though so i don't think it's necessary i'm not going to be removing it yet can you see i'm going to put this here arrange another one here so i just take time to place all of them all around as you can see so the next thing i'm going to be doing now is i'm going to be arranging my pair all, all around it this is actually a pair rivet i bought this online i bought them on aliexpress so it, it's actually a rivet so it has just one side that is open you can actually buy on aliexpress i know the major challenges we are going to be having buying on aliexpress is actually making payments because now you can't use your naira card again to make payments however if you actually can open a bank account with a bank account with providos bank they actually allow you to use your atm card to actually buy you know online like you can use their that atm card to buy in dollar of course you know there is limits even to that but then if you can't do that you can actually let me know whatever you want to buy you can check them on aliexpress send me the link i will tell you the naira equivalent of the dollar because you can't use naira to buy you can't use um set up your account in naira you have to set it up in dollar because we are paying in dollar and not in naira and their equivalent to naira is different i'm trying to explain this for those people who might want to ask so please make sure you you listen to this before you come back and still ask me the same question again so if you want me to buy yes i can buy for you but the only thing is that i will calculate the money in naira and i will tell you what the amount is if you don't agree with it feel free not to buy but if you agree with it feel free to make payments and of course your item will be shipped to you directly and not even brought to me it will be shipped directly to you i do a lot of that for my students so you can see what i have right here that is where i bought mine you can buy it don't ask me the amount too because i don't know the present amount because the truth is that the the naira the amount in dollars is remains it's just the equivalent in naira that changes over time you understand what i'm trying to say because our naira i think presently where i used to exchange um is about 1640 naira 
I'm not talking about my transport fare to the place. Oh, I'm just talking about oh, hello, Oga, Alpha, my friend. How much is dollar now? Is one thousand six hundred and forty naira. So. Please calculate it. If you say you want to buy something that is three dollar, multiply it by that. And I'm going to also have my transport fare to go and collect it from a bookie. It's not from the bank. If you are not a Nigerian, you may not understand this. But for those of us who are Nigerian, you know it's black market and buying. So they are not beside my house. I'm still going to go there. If I want them to put it in a bank for me, I have to pay them too for their transport fare. They have charges for that. So you can imagine. So please, before you come to my inbox and say plenty things, uh, madam, please now. There's nothing like please, so be go. If you don't trust me, don't come to me to buy anything for you, please. And this thing requires patience because it can take as long as 90 days before it will be delivered to you. Yes, I said 90 days. So please, if you are not going to be patient, it's not a deal for me. So let's quickly go into this. There are a variety of them. It's a pair rivet. Just go to AliExpress. You can actually screenshot it on my hand this way and take it to aliexpress of course it will show you samples of what looks like this that's another way to sample to get you know to search for things a lot of people will be coming and be asking you what is the name of this thing please stop that thing stop asking people for names in short just try to screenshot what i am holding now and then you are good to go screenshot it Go and use that picture to search on AliExpress. If you don't know how to do that one, please, you need to come to my DM, make a payment, and I will show you how. Because I know I have taught this already on my Facebook page and Instagram page. Thank you for coming. Now that we have this, what we just need to do is, I'm going to begin to put it, it's going to be in between here, in between here, and in between here. And before you know it, we are good to go. Now, if you do not have this pair rivet and you still want to create this particular design, let me give you, um, you know, one, one thing that you can do to still be able to maintain this. Now, what you should do is this trap, instead of just placing it like this, don't place it. Now, create an opening on this side. Create an opening here, like a small opening corresponding to this width. Insert this trap into it. Create another one on this side. I mean on the front upper. Open that this same middle here where I'm going to be putting my pair rivet. Open it straight down. So by the time you open this side and open this side of this one, this one will enter here. Then it will go, you know, it will come out under. It will come out from this other side. It means you have sealed up this particular place like that. So if you don't want to use a pair rivet, it's fine. So by the time you do that, it comes out here. The next thing you're going to do again is to open another part again. Open another part. So all those, you know, places in between, you understand are where all those bow will be slotted into. I hope you understand. Please, I always need you to respond to me if you understand what I am teaching you. A lot of us just come, you just watch or download and then you zoom off. Please comment. Oh, madam. I fully understand what you are doing. It makes YouTube know that I am actually passing across value and I'm not just trying to engage my audience. So please always comment on my video. I know some of us don't even bother to like. Please like this video. Please, I beg you to like my video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's also important that you subscribe. So I'm going to remove this now. And then I will begin to actually insert. So I'm going to start now. Now, this actually is a tool that came with, I think, my, my, my plastic fastener setting tool. I think this came with my plastic fastener setting tool. So before you ask me where did I buy this one, I bought that plastic fastener tool on um, AliExpress too. I Why buy my on AliExpress. So... I'm just going to also go inside and check. If you want to do this before, you can actually do it before. But I'm going to suggest that if you want to do this before you last it, ensure that you have done, you have tried to first of all, you know, do like, um, um, like check it out first, you know. I've forgotten what name we call that process. You just check first, then you you pick the positions. Yeah, it's running away. So the reason I'm saying that you can you should check first and be sure of whatever position you want to use for it. Because this can be a lot of work if you are doing it like I am doing it right now. Because it's really very small, so it can be distracting if you are not careful. So I'm just going to, it has a, an opening.
All right, so I'm going to take my time, of course, to fix the remaining pair rivet on those straps. I just want to hold them down perfectly well. Now, I need you to know that GPFM40 definitely has an online platform where you can learn shoemaking, ranging from men to women and, of course, to children footwear. So if you would love to join our online platform, you can actually send us a WhatsApp message using the number on the screen, 80 688 906 93. Of course, if you are going to be chatting us outside Nigeria, you need to add plus 234 80 688 906 93. That is the easiest way to be able to chat us, you know, on WhatsApp. Now, I want you to also know that if you are in Nigeria and you are in Abuja, Nigeria, you want to join our offline classes, on site classes, this, yes, we are available to take you through our classes if all you want to learn is heels or just basically i want to learn how to make footwear on a general note just send us a whatsapp message and before you know it <laughs> you see yourself creating amazing design of course after i've done all of this i just you know put the insole cushion i also bottom the footwear i've shown us you know so many times on this channel how to bottom our footwear i actually use our pu gum to actually bottom this particular footwear the reason i'm actually applying the shoe glue is to hold down those bow at those center you know i didn't hold it down with anything so i don't want it to be removing that's why i'm actually hiding you know the shoe glue so when you are creating yours you can decide to tack it down if you don't want to use shoe glue it's all fine and beautiful you need to see how the wedge look like who would believe that this was a revamp there is no way you want to tell them it's a revamp and they will believe it it's actually for a customer who said our daughter will actually be taking you know communion soon and then they want a white wedge thank you for joining me today i'm gonna see you next time bye